Good morning and thank you for joining us. We're live here in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station Flight Control Room at Johnson Space Center in Copy Texas. Closed. We're going to be sending some state commands. The departure of Crew 7 this morning comes just about a week after the arrival of Crew 8 to the International Space Station, bringing four new crew members. So over the last week, we've had a total of 11 astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station. The departure today will bring it back down to the seven crew members we typically keep aboard. Uh, touch temperature LED is green. We got the green. And with that little bit of communication, we just heard that the hatch inside Dragon Endurance is now closed. All four returning crew members, uh, they're getting your first view inside the spacecraft this morning. They are now inside. Looks like Andy Mogensen there. He has been serving as the commander of the International Space Station. And yesterday, the uh, that was handed over to Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko. Currently aboard the International Space Station, we have Commander Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos, along with Nikolai Chub, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara, NASA astronaut Matt Dominic, NASA astronaut Mike Fink, NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grebyankin. Undock sequence commanded. And we did just hear that call up to the crew that the undock sequence has begun. Umbilicals are demated, nominal. And we are hearing that the umbilicals have retracted between Dragon and the International Space Station. So the next milestone that we'll be looking for is for those sets of hooks to uh, fully retract. There's two sets of six hooks, so 12 hooks in all. And once those hooks um, have separated, then there will be a short thruster firing that occurs of the Draco engines to help push Dragon back away from the International Space Station. Before they depart the International Space Station, let's take a moment to get to know the crew we're bringing home tomorrow. Lieutenant Colonel Jasmine Mogbelli hails from Baldwin, New York, and earned a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and a master's degree in aerospace engineering from the Naval Postgraduate School. She also graduated with honors from the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School as an AH. 1W Super Cobra pilot and Marine Corps test pilot, she has flown more than 150 combat missions. Um, in all, she has accrued 2,000 hours of flight time in more than 25 different aircraft. At the time of her selection as an astronaut, McBelly was testing H-1 helicopters and serving as the quality assurance and avionics officer for VMX-1. She's also the proud mom of twin girls. With this mission, she will have logged an estimated 199 days in space during her first flight, including six hours and 42 minutes during her first spacewalk. Today, she is the commander of Crew 7. Sitting next to Jasmine is pilot Andreas Mogesen. This is Mogesen's second trip to the space station. His first was as the flight engineer for the ESA IRIS mission in 2015. He was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, and graduated with an international baccalaureate from the Copenhagen International School, a master's degree in aeronautical engineering from Imperial College London, and a doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. In 2015, Mogesen became the first Danish person to go to space and currently is serving as the European astronaut liaison officer to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. With this mission, he will have logged 209 days in space across two flights. In the role of mission specialist is Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. Furukawa's interest in space began when he was just five years old and saw the Apollo 11 moon landing on TV. 
Furukawa was also a fan of the Japanese TV space hero Ultra 7. His professional career began as a medical doctor, but after seeing a news report about Japan auditioning for new astronauts to do science experiments on the space station, he decided to apply. He was selected by the National Space Development Agency of Japan to be an astronaut candidate in 1999, and his first mission to the space station was as flight engineer for Expedition 28 and 29 that launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in June 2011. Following this mission, he will have logged 366 days in space across his two trips. And to round it out, mission specialist Konstantin Borisov was selected to be a cosmonaut in 2018, and this was his first trip to space. He has a Bachelor of Economics from the Russian Academy of Economics, a Master of Science and Operations Research and Systems Analysis from Warwick University in Coventry, UK, and a Master in Aircraft Life Support Systems from the Moscow Aviation Institute. He has worked for companies such as Volvo and the Boston Consulting Group. He's also an experienced free diving instructor and an international free diving judge. He will end this mission logging 199 days in space. Thanks, Sandra. We just heard that separation is confirmed. The International Space Station and Dragon flying 261 statute miles over Hawaii at three at 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Just received confirmation of a nominal depart, depart zero, zero burn. burn. Is complete and nominal. Depart zero burn being a very short burn using uh, the service section Draco thrusters to break some stiction from Dragon and the International Space Station officially marking its departure. We are standing by for depart burn one, which will increase the opening rate between the spacecraft and the station. Again, at this time, the crew are all suited up and in their seats. They'll have an opportunity to get out of those suits shortly and prepare for their longer ride home. Standing by for confirmation that the depart burn one has begun. And we did hear that that burn has begun. Again, this burn is only 22 seconds long, so it's pretty short burn. And Dragon, SpaceX, depart burn one is complete and nominal. As a reminder, we will be deactivating the big loop following the approach ellipsoid exit. Hey, Dragon copies, depart one burn is complete. And uh, station from Dragon, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, for those staying on board on Expedition 71, we hope it does filled with laughter and fulfilling science as ours was. So Laurel, we'll see you in a couple weeks, and uh, we left you some peanut butter and tortillas in Node 1. And on board Dragon, the crew is going to begin to work on getting out of their spacesuits uh, for the journey ahead. Uh, they are splashing down early tomorrow morning, so they're going to get comfortable. They do wear those spacesuits during some of the more dynamic phases of the mission, such as launch, um, as well as docking and undocking, and of course, splash down. Uh, but now that they have successfully undocked from the International Space Station at 820 Pacific, about 12 and a half minutes ago, they are able to get out of those spacesuits get comfortable, uh, maybe have a meal, and just enjoy their last few hours in orbit. Crew 7 was the first crew in which all four seats were occupied by a member of a different nationality or a different partner country. Jasmine Mogelli is our NASA astronaut aboard, joined by Andreas Mogensen of ESA, the European Space Agency. Satoshi Furukawa is from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, and Konstantin Borisov comes to us from Roscosmos. It was the first flight for Jasmine and Konstantin, and the second flight for both Andreas and Satoshi. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground. Uh, you have a go for your preparations for crew off duty at your discretion. We're ready to support in case you'd like to talk to surgeon. And uh, a reminder to set your audio destinations to ground. SpaceX. 
Uh, Dragon on Dragon to ground. Uh, we copy all, and now we're going to configure for crew off duty. Good repack, Dragon. And those words from the ground up to NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, letting them know that now that they're out of the approach ellipsoid, they can get configured for a crew off-duty period as they uh, wait splash down early tomorrow morning. The crew is going to get out of their spacesuits and get comfortable for the remainder of their journey. So again, the crew is now out of the approach ellipsoid, which means that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours. Again, even if it lost all maneuvering, and we call that a safe free drift trajectory. And with that, now that NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, ESA astronaut Andy Mogison, JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov have departed the International Space Station, it will take them about 18 and a half hours until they make their way back down to Earth. The crew is currently doffing their spacesuits, or they may have actually uh, completely gotten out of their spacesuits to settle in for the flight home. And today, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 5.50 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning or 2.50 a.m. Pacific time on March 12th, followed by the crew getting picked up by sea by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. As they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our Crew 7 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up for this morning, we will turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-7 mission. Our friends at the Johnson Space Center will provide continuous live audio-only coverage along Crew-7's journey home until we rejoin from Hawthorne approximately one hour prior to splashdown. You can find the audio only link by visiting nasa.gov slash live and clicking the mission audio link or searching for NASA mission audio live feed on YouTube at go.nasa.gov slash live ISS. Meanwhile, we will rejoin for live visual coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on X at, at NASA at SpaceX and on the web at nasa.gov. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.